Hey, okay. Peter, how are you doing? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing really good. I'm so excited to be talking with you today. You too. I just watched the episode from last night uh, this afternoon, and I have to say it was really something. Which one was it? Uh, the one where Luke got shot. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hang on a second. I'm just going to close the curtain. Yeah, no problem. There's so not the light bleeding in. Okay, yeah, no, yeah. That's pretty heavy. Oh, my gosh. I cannot believe it. Um, it's just the whole episode was kind of crazy. I know. Especially because of how they were arrested in the beginning, and now Luke gets shot by the police. So. I know, I know. It's a huge setup. It's a great setup, too. So you'll see how it all, all plays out. Unfortunately, I, Paul, I, can't really, I can't really tell you anything like that's going to happen. You know that, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I, all hope, right. I hope it's all good. <laughs> oh, what? Well, who are you talking to? No, it's not going to be all good. There's going to be some bad. Well, yeah, true. But I just hope he pulls it through. That's all I want. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, th I want to thank you for taking the time uh, on your busy schedule to chat with me. I'm very excited to that we were able to set this up. Oh, I'm, I'm I'm thrilled to be here. So I hope I can I hope I can answer whatever questions you've got. You know, I've got, I'm under a, one of those crazy <laughs> non <laughs> I'm under one of those crazy non disclosure agreements. So there may be stuff that I just have to say I can't I can't tell you. It's no problem at all. Okay. Just let me know when you all can't right. say anything. Okay. Uh, so how did you end up getting the role of roaming for uh, Batwoman? Oh well, this is kind of a, a weird story because. Um, I got some sides and of course when they audition for these characters they don't they don't tell you who you're auditioning for because they want to keep it you know so the sides were for a character called Skullface and I know Batman and I know the history of Batman and 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 all of that and I couldn't remember a villain named Skullface anywhere so I thought okay this is some sort of character that just made up for season three or season two and and whatever he's some generic bad guy and okay so I'll do the audition and then it turned out that I got the part and um while I was sort of going yay I got the part I kind of went yay oh so I called my agent and I said I just want to get this straight when they say skull face do they mean black mask and so my agent said, I'll call you back in 15 minutes. And he called me back and he went, yeah, yeah, you're Roman Sionis, Black Mask. And I went. Oh. <laughs> that must have been surreal. It's yeah. a huge, it's a huge responsibility. I mean, this is a major villain. And and you, you and I said, so it's good that they didn't say that in the audition, because I, I would have just said, I'm not doing this. I'm not going to be the guy who takes that on and messes it up. And the fans are going to hate me and. So that was good. But then when you start doing the when you realize what you've got to do, it's a huge responsibility. I mean, I'm a, I'm a huge sci fi fan. I'm, I'm a total comic geek. And, and I know what happens when you kind of mess with the story and you mess with the characters. I, 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 I don't like it. So uh, you know, I, I really wanted to make sure, and I had a great meeting with Caroline, and I said, I really want to make sure that the fans, you know, were, were being true to the, the character here. I don't, want to, I don't want to do an interpretation. But, you know, having said that, there have been a lot of iterations of Black Mask. I mean, from, the, from when he was first created back in the 80s until right now, every time he reappears in the comics, it's another artist, it's another writer, it's another... So they... they uh, there's all sorts of versions of him. I mean, the very first version, his mask was just a human face carved out of black ebony. And then it fused to his face. And so then artists said, well, maybe his face is now a skull-like mask. And then later artists said, no, he wears a skull mask on his head. And, and uh, sometimes he has ears showing. I know a lot of fans don't like the mask because it shows my ears, but in some of the comic iterations, his ears show and some of the comics, they don't show. So the, the art department and, uh, and the writers, I think, did a really good job of kind of amalgamating all of those iterations and, and trying to find, okay, what is the central core of Black Mask and what can we do here? And I think they did a great job. And they really did. And I have to, I have to say, as one of those fans, I definitely love their portrayal of the character. 
Yeah, I think they stuck really, really close to the, the source material, and I was really happy with that. I know with, with the Harley Quinn movie, they had Ewan McGregor play him. Yep. And I thought you were kind of goofy to play the character, but when I watch you, you're kind of scary in a good <laughs> way. <laughs> well, listen, I think Ewan McGregor is brilliant, and I actually, I really liked his interpretation because he, he really captured that whole spoiled brat aspect of Roman Sionis and... Uh, uh, which I really enjoyed because he really played that to, to a T and when he got really crazy, he was really crazy. Yeah. Um, and we kind of went back to the original source material to, to basically say, yeah, he is a spoiled brat, but he's a little bit more, uh, he's, he's kind of had a psychic disconnect. I mean, in the comics he's described, Roman is described as having, you know, dead eyes and, he, he's a sociopath and he's not a particularly flamboyant sociopath. He kills his parents in a fire and he puts acid soaked masks on his victims faces. I mean, he's, he's sort of a nut job. And I, I, I don't really see there's a big difference between Roman and black mask. In fact, one of the things I talked to uh, Holly Dale about the, one of the directors was, you know, it's more like Roman is a mask that black mask puts on when he goes out into society but in fact he really is this psychotic you know messed up guy uh who's who's all about you know calling out the hypocrisy of of uh the, the upper classes you know and when you're talking about the comics i noticed that a whole bunch of changes were made between uh your character and cersei so mm -hmm. I know that they're not really father and daughter. In that yeah, thing, yeah. Where they're kind of like uh, different people in the comics. They were introduced yeah. together at the same time. Uh, what did you think about that change? I thought it was appropriate because it, it gave him, I mean, it gave, it, it gave a very interesting human motive behind his, his, uh, his darkness, which was that his daughter he blames the death of his daughter on, on uh, well, society in general, but in particular, Batwoman. And that was a good way of transitioning that character of Cersei into the show. I think if they'd done that whole storyline with Cersei, it would have been a little distracting. It would have been like a whole other kind of thing where it would have been more of a Black Mask origin story as opposed to doing this, which, which really gave him a very strong motivation uh, in terms of the show. And let's face it, I mean, I think that in this day and age of all these multiverses happening all over the place, I think we can safely assume that we're in one of the multiverses. It, it's not necessarily the universe where the origin story of Black Mask occurred. It is very specifically its own universe, you know? So I think that, uh, I think it worked brilliantly. For sure, I definitely agree with that. And with the major twist with the Cersei uh, story, is that she's actually Kate Kane. And I Is she what? Oh yeah, that she's actually Kate Kane. And, and that's an interesting twist because, you know, when she first shows up or you first realize that Kate is still alive in Roman's basement, basically, uh, and all messed up and tortured and, and you know, it's horrible. It's like you're watching this beloved character and there's nothing you can do about it. Like he's got her and he's torturing her and he's he's going to do something horrible with her. And I think that's a great dramatic point, you know, because the, the audience just sits there watching it. It's like, you know, watching, uh, you know, watching James Bond get tortured for two hours or watching, you know, Luke Skywalker die. You know, it's 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 just it's 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 horrible. It's it's not a nice thing. So you get a lot of bang for your buck there dramatically by literally having it be Kate Kane and that he's got these horrible machinations with Enigma uh, uh, that he's going to do something and you're not quite sure what it is and you eventually find out what it is but yeah. um, the fact that he's basically when he blames you know Jacob Kane and he, and he blames Kate Kane for the death of his daughter he's gonna take Jacob's daughter from him and turn it into his own daughter you know, it's 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 a psychotic eye for an eye type of thing. Definitely a surprising twist because I did not see that coming. Yeah. When the, we the fans found out that she 
the character is coming back, even though yeah. it's not Ruby Rose. And I'm like, well, how are they going to do uh, work on that? Yeah. And I, I love this twist, and I uh, can't wait to see more of how that relationship with uh, Kate Kane, Percy, and you come along in future episodes. I think it'll be great. I think, I think people are really going to enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. And after your audition, uh, what was your take on the role uh, that made the producers like you so much? I, there again, I, because the, the audition sides were vague, I just knew he was a bad guy and the sides were well written. They, they were very sort of, uh, they were just really menacing. And so I just, I, I did my best menacing guy. And uh, I guess that's what they liked. Uh, they, they must have liked my menacing guy. Um, I can't, I, I don't know. I mean, most of the time when you do an audition, it's a crapshoot. You, you, there's, there's a thousand other people who are better than you and you're the one they chose. And so some, there's no rhyme to reason. You know, sometimes you, you know that you, you probably did the best audition in the room and you never hear it from them again. And then sometimes out of the blue, you go, well, I'm never going to get that one. And they call you up and they say, you're the person. So it's, you just have to throw your hat in the ring and, and hopefully they pick you. Well, congratulations on that successful audition. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, so how did you prepare to play the role of Black Mask? Well, I hadn't read, I hadn't read the, the comics for a while. So I went to my local comic shop and I said, listen, I need I need you guys to pull up because I know these guys. And I said, I just pull up like your favorite black mask stories from, from the whole, all the time and, uh, and get them to me. And in COVID, you know, they, I called them on the phone and they put them in a package and I went down and picked them up. And then I just read that. I just read the source materials and I read it from the, the, the very beginning, the or, origin story to and obviously they didn't give me the original origin story because that would have been crazy and expensive, but right. like they, but there are some anthologies that contain it. And then they gave me a bunch of other stuff that was more current uh, that wasn't expensive to buy. And I just, I just used that, you know, and I, and I thought, okay, so, so far really the only physical description, I've got some physical descriptions of him from the, from the comics. Um, but in terms of his character, the only thing I could find in all of these things was that the narration always referred to him as having dead eyes. And at one point, um, one, of the, one of the people who was fighting him says, uh, I hadn't seen him in a long time. All I could remember was that his voice sounded like sandpaper. So those were the only two physical things that I had to go on. And so I just tried to incorporate that into it. When I was Roman, I just tried to be like, you know, dead. And, and when I was Black Mask, I just tried to have a sandpapery, raspy voice. <laughs> I know that makes it sound, I'm just, acting is actually more complicated than that, but. I, <laughs> I believe it. <laughs> that's, that's, I think behind the scenes here. That's what I started with, yeah. Um, so what kind of training did you have to go through? Did you do any of your own stunts? Oh, I did all my own. No, I didn't. No, no. They had a fantastic, they've got a fantastic stunt team. Uh, the fight sequences are amazing on that show. And one of the first days I had on set was a big fight scene. And uh, so I showed up on set and they ran the scene and, and you know, we did the, the dialogue part of it. And then they said, okay, and then we'll cut here and then we'll do the fight scene. So let's rehearse the fight scene. And they did this fight where I was, I, I thought to myself, nobody's going to believe that's me <laughs> because this guy was doing acrobatics. I mean, it was amazing. So I just, then and there, I was determined I was going to tell my family that I did all of that fighting. <laughs> so don't, if my, don't ever let my family watch this video, but yes. <laughs> Uh, no, they, they, they've got an amazing stunt team and uh, and they just do it like that. Like yeah. you, you could literally go to them and say, I know you've got nothing, but we're going to shoot this in uh, 15 minutes. Can you come up with something? And they come up with something. They come up with this amazing fight scene. And so, no, I didn't do my own stunts. No. Well, maybe someday soon. <laughs> 
Well, well, there again, Bell. Like, I'm also I'm a little up in age, so sometimes I've, I've I've learned. When I was younger, I did a lot of my own stunts, and I have the injuries to to show. And I've learned that you know what, if they've got a good stunt team, yeah. let the let the guys do it. Let the stunt guys do it. Better play it safe. Hey, and it just makes the character look better. I mean, if they'd actually said, "Will you do this fight scene?" It would have looked horrible. It would have, you know. I mean, I, I'm sure I would have done it, but stunt people are a really cool, separate performing breed, and they know how to fight on camera. Whereas actors sometimes don't really, because we tend to go realistically, right? right? Whereas they know how to be like dramatic, and you kind of need that. You kind of need the stunt team to step in and make it and sell it, right? Because actors generally go more for the realistic version. You know, it's kind of like I always say with, uh, you know, in movies, they've got the whole Sam Peckinpah thing. When, when somebody shoots you with a magnum, you go flying back through a window. Well, that's that, it's not physics. That's not how it works. If you get shot with a magnum, you actually collapse forward from the force of the impact. You don't fly backwards. So if you're going to be realistic in movies, sometimes it's not as dramatic as being thrown backwards through a movie when you get shot. And the same thing happens with a fight scene. Sometimes it's just better to 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 sell the fight dramatically than actually to do it realistically. Now, sometimes it's better to do it realistically. Um, yeah, for sure. Did you ever see, did you ever uh, see Eastern doing... Promises? Did you ever see Eastern Promises? The movie Not called familiar. Eastern Promises. Okay, so you got to see this film. But there's a fight scene in there. A uh, David Cronenberg. Uh, there's a fight scene in that film that takes place in a Turkish spa between three guys who are fully dressed in leather and one naked Viggo Mortensen. And they've got box cutters and he's got nothing. And it is one of the most realistic fight scenes I've ever seen in my life. So that's an example of actually really playing the realism of the fight scene. But anyway, back to Batwoman. Yes. You want the stunt guys to come in and, and and really make it look like a comic book, you know? For sure. And I'll definitely check out that movie you mentioned. Yeah, it's it's great. <laughs> you love movies. <laughs> so you have mentioned that you were a huge comic book fan. Yeah. Um, how did you get into being a fan of comics? You know what? It's I actually remember this story. I was very sick with the flu when I was a kid. Uh, probably about I want to say 10 years old, maybe. I don't know. Uh, I was very sick with the flu. I was home from school for a long, long time. And my mom, we lived up uh, north of Toronto at the time, and my mom had gone down into the city to do some, some shopping or something. And she went by a comic shop and literally bought me a bunch of comics to occupy me while I was lying in bed. And I just got hooked because, of course, the first time you read a comic, you go, this is great. Then you get to the end, and you're like, what do you mean I got to wait till next month? Like, what What the heck? You know, and then they, they hook you. And after that, it was like every month we did a trip down to Toronto so I could go to my comic shop and get my next issue. And so that's that's sort of how I got involved. And then you meet people through the whole network and then you know they say well if you like that you should try reading this comic and then if you like that you should try to read you know and then you and then you sort of accumulate and then it gets a little out of control uh i eventually stopped because i realized it was getting a little out of control i i had bookshelves and so which i eventually gave to one of my nieces and hopefully she made some money on them but <laughs> you should see my closets and my bookshelves i got full of stuff <laughs> yeah yeah for me, I started when I was like maybe five years old with the yeah. Spider-Man movie with Tobey Maguire. That was pretty much the start of it for me. Um, I'm gonna kind of get a little personal here because um, I'm not. Uh, I have I have autism. Yeah. So having these characters and comics and superheroes have been a really huge part of my life. And yeah. Pretty much saved me in the best way I can. So. Um, reading comics and watching the movies have definitely made, made my life a whole lot better today. Hey man, whether you have autism or not, reading comic books and watching these movies makes everybody's life a whole lot better. I mean, it's it's such great escapism and it's so amazing. I mean, it's it's great. It's fantastic. But so you were, so you started collecting comics after seeing a movie. 
yeah. So that was your, your intro into this was, so you saw the movie and then you went, hey, what was this based on? And they said, oh, it's based on a comic. And you went, what are these comics you talk of? And so you went to the comic shop and bought some comics? Yeah, pretty much. Uh, I, well, they were gifted to me, actually, um, with, with the Spider-Man comics and then one of them with the Batman comics based on Batman Begins. Right. So that, uh, I didn't really start collecting them until I was in junior high. So now I have shelves full of comics everywhere. Oh my God. Yeah, you know, I know. I, I, I hear you. I hear you. We watch that. That that can get that can get crazy. That can get You're out a kid of at that age, you start watching these kind of things. Um, I was I was getting into Pokemon, Harry Potter, and Marvel and DC at the same time. Right. So I didn't know anything about comics until a little little bit later after right. I started. But it was definitely worth worth the wait of reading the comics because I keep it's seeing the same logos in all these movies. Right. It's it's funny because that's 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 actually it's interesting when when you think of it that way that. A lot of that material is coming to a whole new generation, like your generation, is getting that material through the films, right, of the DC universe and the Marvel universe. And and uh, it almost feels like, oh, no, then they're not going to actually buy the comics anymore. They're just going to get those stories from the movies. And you don't want that, right? You want them to go back to the store. Both. Yeah. Um, so what has your, um, <clears throat> sorry, uh, what was your favorite scene or episode to film so far? Oh, you know, I, I, and I'm not trying to dodge the question. I actually have, have had a pretty good time on every episode. Um, I, I think there, I think there is an episode coming up that I had a particularly fun time on. Uh, I can't really talk about it cause it hasn't aired yet. Um, but you know that this is probably one of the best crews I've ever worked for, um, and certainly the cast were very generous and very welcoming and very, you know, you show up and you you, you feel the responsibility of, of what you have to do, and they totally welcome you and they totally make you feel that don't worry about it, just relax. It's going to be great. We're going to have fun. We're going to laugh, and and so. There was never a day on set that I really hated it ever, right? Because you just you see you you as, as as somebody who really enjoys comics, you feel so privileged to be a part of this whole this whole thing. For and sure. when and then, yeah, and then when you get these scripts down that are like, okay, they're staying true to the character, they're staying true to the concept, it, it's great, we're gonna have fun. Then yeah, going to work every day is just a joy. How can you not like working on a superhero statue? <laughs> Um, what do you love most about playing Roman? About playing Roman? Yeah. Oh, uh, wow. his, his suits. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> Roman, you know, Roman is, is like so classically, uh, in, in terms of, in terms of theatrical characters, he's what's known as a fop. He's, He's full of pomp and circumstance. He's got the perfect hair and the perfect clothes. And, you know, he thinks he knows everything, but he's actually an idiot. But that is, like I said before, that is a mask that he puts on so that people think he's harmless, right? So it's fun to play Roman because he just seems like, he's just like this guy who's just, you know, and, into cosmetics and fashion and he's like a, a total what do you call it metrosexual kind of guy um and that was probably the funnest part of playing roman because he was just so sleazy uh what do you hope to do next for the character in future episodes uh what do i hope to do next no uh, uh, what would you like to do for regarding the character in future episode like what kind of thing do you want to do oh well i mean I'm done for the, I'm done this season. I, I whether they bring done already? Back. What's that? I didn't know you were done already. <laughs> I well, I mean, we've wrapped the season. The season the season wrapped last week. Oh. So <laughs> so they're now working very very hard to finish the episodes so we can get them on the air when when they're supposed to get on the air. Uh, I didn't realize you were But don't them. but no, but never fear, never fear. They're going to turn that hiatus around as quickly as possible. I think they're going back into production in July. So the Batwoman will be back on your screens as soon as possible. 
Um, well, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, what, I, if they if they decide that they're going to ca carry on with Roman uh, black masks, uh, uh, which I can't really talk about in terms of that, um, then uh, I'd be happy with whatever they did. Well, I hope you can come back uh, at a later season. They're still going. <laughs> I hope so too. I had a great time on it. So uh, what was it like working with the cast and the crew? Um, like, what did you enjoy most working with them? Well, like I said, the crew were amazingly, uh, I mean, they've worked together before on lots of shows. So they, they're sort of a, a really tight family and, and they work together really well. They have a shorthand. So, you know, there was never any stress. There was never any tension. Some days would sort of the wheels would fall off and, you know, there'd be really long days and everybody would get a little, eh, but in general, such a great bunch of people and, and, and really welcoming and making you feel good. And the cast, there again, the cast made an effort to welcome you. Like you'd show up and you'd be sitting there and you sort of feel like the new kid in school and you're like, you know, does anybody want to be my friend? And they immediately just sort of jump on you and like, oh, you're the guy. And, and they, you know, so there's nothing I have not a bad word to say about any of those people I love they, that <laughs> they they're the nicest people they're the sweetest people they know what they're doing so they don't take it too seriously but they they take what they do very seriously but they don't they, they know that it's not um it's not, it's not it's not that they know what it's not they know what it is so there's always fun People have fun on. Uh, they know that. Like, let's 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 make something here that is really fun to watch. You know, uh, and they're all really good. I mean, the cast are re really talented people. So working with them in every scene, whether it was Javizia or Rachel or Rasmus, any of those people, you 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 had a good time. They weren't like. I've worked with some actors who are a little, little dodgy in, oh. in my, in my, my storied career. Uh, and none of these people were like that. It was just a joy to always sort of do scenes with them. That's fantastic. I, yeah. I'm, I'm really happy to hear that. <laughs> and you definitely <laughs> made uh, my first Batwoman interview. Definitely worth having fun talking with you. Uh, it, I, it was a real pleasure, real pleasure. So thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me, Peter. Um, I'll send you the link uh, through Amy uh, when I have okay. everything uploaded for you. And uh, maybe next time we'll talk um, in the future. Absolutely. Uh, Take thank care. Thank you so much, Peter. Great okay. to meet you. You too. Take care. Bye.